Lussie was getting ready for bed. As she was putting on her nightgown, she felt warm liquid running down her leg. And she knew it was time for her baby, her first baby, to be born. The Alford plantation owner was called Barry Alford. They called him Little Barry, his wife Mary, and they had two sons, Solomon and Monroe. This was the mid-19th century in Mississippi, and for a slave girl like Lussie, having a baby was mixed with emotions. She knew that plantation owners were known to sell slave babies to the highest bidder, and she was afraid this could happen to her baby. Lussie's best friend came that night to help deliver little Matilda. Little Matilda was wrapped in a blanket and laid next to Lussie so she can touch all of her fingers and toes, and she cherished every moment that they could spend together. Little Matilda was so precious, but early that next morning, bam, the door opened and in swooped Mary, the plantation owner's wife, and she took Matilda. Lussie cried out, but on deaf ears. She knew it was gonna take all of her strength to get down to the kitchen to make coffee. She still had to make coffee for the master. She listened in the hallways for her baby, but she didn't hear a sound. Solomon came in to get his coffee, and while stirring his coffee, sugar, and cream very slowly, he leaned over Lussie. She sure is a pretty little thing. What we gonna name her? Well, Lussie broke down crying, please, Master Solomon, don't sell Matilda. And Solomon was taken aback. And he leaned to her. He looked at her with his deep blue eyes. Ain't nobody going to take my children. I promise you that. Soon after, Lussie had more children for Solomon, Matthew and Mary, who was named after the missus of the house. Matilda, Matthew, and Mary were the heartbeat of the Alford household. They went to church with the Alfords every Sunday. And when they came home from church, Lussie was so grateful to spend time with her children, she would have a beautiful supper waiting, waiting for them. 1861 marked the beginning of the Civil War. Solomon and his brother Matthew joined the Confederate Army. Many of the slaves had already left leaving Little Barry, Mary, and a handful of slaves on the plantation, including Lussie. Solomon made Lussie promise not to leave with his children, that he would return. The Confederates lost the war. Abraham Lincoln was elected president and issued the final Emancipation Proclamation. Lussie and her children were finally free. But she kept her promise to Solomon and stayed on the plantation. Solomon survived the war even though Monroe was killed in battle. And Solomon came home and took over the plantation responsibilities because his father, Little Barry, was a broken man. Solomon kept his promise to Lussie, too, and cared for and provided and protected for all of their children. And they soon added more children to the family. Rosalie, Lafayette, and Major. They were all part of the Alfred family now. Even though the slaves were now free, there was a growing group of white men called the Ku Klux Klan that were brutalizing the freed slaves. They wanted to keep things the way they used to be. They increasingly brutalized the freed slaves by beating them and sometimes lynching them when they tried to be good citizens. You wouldn't know it, but it was also dangerous to leave Mississippi. Lussie soon passed away and Solomon's health was very, very weak. He had to figure out a way to get his now grown children out of Mississippi, and he had an idea. He would save large sums of money, and he would give it to the youngest son, because the old ways was the older, the elder would give funds to the eldest son, but he thought he would give it to the youngest son. 
Well, the white relatives of the Alfred family got wind that his Solomon's funds were getting depleted, and they descended on the oldest son house looking for the money. And that was Matthew. He had no idea what they were talking about. But that didn't stop them from ransacking Matthew's house looking for the money. Solomon was successful at getting all of his children out of Mississippi, except for Mary and Matilda, who decided to stay. And Solomon also stayed in Mississippi. And when he died, he was buried right next to Lussie. Lussie and Solomon's children ended up settling in the o Oklahoma territories. Major, he was the baby, ended up receiving a medical degree in pharmacology, and this was in 1908. Many of Matthew's children and Lafayette's children became doctors, lawyers, preachers, and teachers. And sometimes they kept in touch with their white Alfred families in Mississippi. When I was four years old, I met my great-great-grandfather, Matthew. I remember him because he had one blue eye and one white eye. And they said he lost his eye in a shootout. But he used to smoke this sweet-smelling pipe anytime he told stories, and I wanted a puff. And I asked him, Grandpa, can I have a puff? And he said yes. So I hopped on his knee, and I snatched that pipe, and I took a couple of puffs. All of a sudden, I got dizzy. My stomach started churning, my head spinning, and I ran outside, and I got sick right on the front lawn. I never asked for a puff again. But I want to say to you, these stories come to life. Find out what your heritage is. With technology now, there's no reason to keep our stories of our family history in the dark. Bring it to the light.